J-Lo dropped a music video short film and then dropped a behind the scenes documentary of said music video short film. It reminds me like when I was 16 in the Bronx, running up and down the block. And people are mad. She's holding on to being this girl in the Bronx. At this point, I don't even believe she's from New York anymore because what block are you from, J-Lo? For some reason, her playing the role of an actually talented singer must have gotten to her head. Uh, I miss Aaliyah. I miss Moesha. My name's Elisa. If you've never met me, my name's Elisa. As of late, we have been marrying the topic of entertainment and drama, and I'm not gonna lie to you guys. I like it over here. But here's the thing. Everything's fun, everything's funny, and everything is a game until it is you. So I'm keeping that in the back of my mind. I'm trying not to put too much of my opinion into things. So today, we are here to talk about JLo's new short film video of music this is me now a love story and the documentary that followed the greatest love story never told and the ruckus all right we're gonna start with some backstory jennifer lopez is a musician and an actor and ben affleck is a writer filmmaker actor producer so the two of them met in 2002-ish, I guess, maybe 2001, they were co-stars. So not only did J-Lo meet the love of her life in 2002, she released her last album before this album called This Is Me Then. But unfortunately, three days before their September 2003 wedding, they called off the wedding mutually. Jennifer Lopez was married to someone named Chris Judd from 2001 to 2003. Now, I don't know what the timeline of things are. You know, in Hollywood, there is a lot of blurred lines when it comes to that. And you know what another thing I wanna share? That man Ben, he loves a gin. He loves a gin. So Ben and Jen broke up before their marriage and they both continued on with other relationships in that time. But July 16th, 2022, 20 years later, Ben and Jen, they hear those wedding bells ringing and they actually go up to the chapel and they do something about it. And I remember when they got married, everybody's talking about how in love they are. And this was the talk of the town, their relationship, which had been the case in 2002 and that had also been an issue. Here we are 20 years later, nothing's changed. But they, they don't let that stop them this time. No, they don't. They actually lean into it a little bit more than they did before. Jennifer Lopez feels so inspired by her fairy tale love that she decides to start creating an album again. And so the rebirth of Ben and Jen was the rebirth of Jennifer Lopez making music because she had stopped making music after This Is Me Then, but the love inspired her. So this is her now. This Is Me Now, a love story. On February 16th, 2024, Jennifer Lopez released This Is Me Now, the album, and This Is Me Now, a love story, the short film music video. I'm not really sure what to call it, and in the documentary, neither were they. So I'm gonna switch up the terminology, but just know, you know. This Is Me Now, A Love Story is a narrative-driven odyssey of Jennifer Lopez's story of love seen through her eyes. The film starts with Jennifer Lopez narrating a story called Alita and Taru. She's narrating over these like moving pictures. It's not exactly a cartoon. Um, not gonna even fucking lie, it is bomb. Like the visuals in this project are bomb. After that, we move into, she's driving through this like wet planed area on a motorcycle she's not driving she's on the back a man is driving obviously it's ben affleck but his face is cut off so it's it could even be wizard kelly you know what i'm saying but it's ben and then they like trip on a rock they tumble off boom we're in a factory and this is where we get into the musicality she starts playing the first song it's called hearts and flowers i'm not gonna lie to you guys i watched that scene alone three times before the song was memorable to me now the song is fine and the music in this project is fine it's just it just feels commercial like it just feels a little generic to me they're in this factory the choreography is good the visuals are good they're on a break and then they're called in to work and then this heart is about to explode but that's the whole factory keeping it together and then everybody has to evacuate but she goes inside with the flower to try to make it work boom we're in her therapist's office with fat joe now i did watch this film a couple times and 
it was a little bit unclear. She's talking about how this is a recurring dream that she keeps having. And he's like, this started after your heartbreak. We transition to the next scene where they're in a glass house. Her and the new guy, they get into a fight and they're wearing ropes and they're like tethered together. This song is called Rebound. It makes a lot of sense. Like I think the flow of this project goes together really well. They're like fighting and they're making up, but they're tethered together. And then once it just gets a little bit too abusive, she cuts the tether, she runs out, the glass house breaks and she has a friend there to pick her up. Honestly, I get all that. The only part I didn't really get is why there were like multiple people, unless this is supposed to be some sort of apartment complex, which was just a little bit unclear. There were multiple people tethered together having their own relationships. But next, we're getting into my favorite scene. The scene of the Zodiacal Council. And this is where we have cameos from Kiki Palmer, Jane Fonda, Jennifer Lewis, Post Malone, Trevor Noah, Jay Shetty, Kim Petras, I'm Sofia Vergara, Saad Guru. Like I'm gonna, I really hope I don't miss anybody, but I loved seeing all their faces. They're trying to guide her in her life, but obviously they can't get invested because they live up in the stars and this is like human shit going on down here. So they're talking about her. They realize she got engaged and then boom, we get into the wedding scene. She gets married to somebody. She's so happy. Her friends are there. They're just like, I give it 366 days. Like, and then they're getting divorced. They're talking shit behind her back. Not shit shit. They're just talking like friendship. <laughs> The thing I like about this scene is like, it is a musical number. They're dancing around, they're having a good time. She's playing the song, can't get enough. I actually can't stop hearing it now that I'm thinking about it. Again, a little bit commercial, a little bit generic, but it's cute. Definitely gonna be played at some weddings for sure in the future. As I was saying, this scene is fun. Weddings are fun. She's dancing around, there's choreography going, but every time she like does a little flip flip turn, she's married to a new man. And I love the fact that she's like wearing the same outfit. They're at the same venue. Because honestly, if you marry one man, you marry them all. I'm, I've am i never been married. I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about, but it just made sense in my mind. <laughs> Anyway, I think it was very clever. Right after that, we are back in the therapist's office with that Joe and the husbands. She is switching between each of them. They all have these therapy sessions with her therapist. But honestly, you kind of morph into the person that you're with anyway, so they may as well be there. And she ends up divorcing them all. After this, she's dating around and she's saying that she loves you after a day. And then her friends meet at her house for an intervention, calling her a love addict. Obviously, when you're the center of the intervention, you're probably gonna throw some low blows, which is exactly what she did. After the intervention, she got fired by her therapist and she really just was forced to look inward. So she decided to go to like Love Addicts Anonymous. I'm not really sure. But the rest of the album gets played out. And that's another thing. I don't think the entire album gets played out. Basically, she does all of this work on herself. She gets her therapist back. She heals her inner child. She dances in the rain. One of her friends gets married. She's happy for them. She even goes to the wedding alone, which was something she was incapable of. And then boom, Ben Affleck, Wizard Kelly is back again in her arms. It's cute. I would personally rate it a seven out of 10, mostly in part because like the visuals were great. The story, I had to watch it a couple times, but it did make sense. I just don't really go around watching short film music video musicals. So I'm probably not gonna watch it again, but I would say like, you should give it a watch, especially like if you like Jennifer Lopez. This is the behind the scenes documentary of the visual album. We get to see Jennifer Lopez's process, the things that she struggled with. She even got really candid about who she wanted to be in the project and who said that they were unavailable. She actually mentioned a self-deprecating amount of times that nobody asked for another album. Nobody asked for another movie. She just felt like she had to do this. But I think that this is a story of continuing to be persistent. Somebody gives her, she doesn't say who, they give her a $30 million deal to make the production and then they take it off the table. So she decides to use her own money. I don't know how much money she put into it because she never said. We even got to see Ben Affleck sprinkled in throughout the movie. He was talking about how he likes to be more private and more discreet, but he came to understand her process a little bit more. And then at the very end, we find out that she gets a deal. She does not disclose how much the deal is. She pitches a project, somebody finances it or pays her back rather. Documentaries behind the scenes is always to pour a little bit of ethos into the mix and obviously show you the process, but they want to get you feeling something and it, it works on me like a charm i feel something every single time like if i wouldn't have seen the online discourse i probably would have been like wow soldier but that's actually what i want to get into now the ruckus 
people are not shying away from speaking their opinions about Jennifer Lopez as a person. And a lot of people are stepping forward. A lot of people have a lot to say about what she says about the law. Even old classmates are stepping out about this. We also both attended an all girls Catholic high school in an Irish and Italian neighborhood. So you weren't running up and down the block. You know damn well you were sitting next to Megan Farley and Christine Marchetti in class. Why are you lying? Please stop using us to look human. We are sick of you. You don't do shit for us. Keep our names out of your mouth. We're not running up and down the block. Not all of us do that for kicks. You're stupid. Even the crew. That was the best shot we got after 12 takes. Guess what the one that was? Yeah, you're right. It was the 12th, big brain. And then when I grew up and I was really able to tell the difference between, oh, she got a little bonky and some ass. I was like, there's no way this is what people have been raging over. There's no way, please. That's when I really started to see, okay, this lady is a fraud. No, but the craziest one actually is about the school. Is it the same block that you went to middle and high school there, which they both reached out to you asking for donations to help improve their facilities for the kids to which you told them no? Was it that block? This is all alleged, but if that shit about the school is real, JLo, I'm not gonna lie, the ethos did get me in. It did get me in and got me feeling. I am the target audience for projects like that because I'm gonna feel every single time. After hearing what the people have to say, it's tough to ignore that stuff. Now, I don't know you. I've never met you. Why am I talking? She's not watching. Anyway, you guys, watch the movie This Is Me Now, A Love Story, and even watch The Greatest Love Story Never Told. Form your own opinion. I kind of knew what was going on online, and then I watched. And while she did touch me a little bit, she didn't penetrate me as much as she would have if I hadn't seen what was going on online. Maybe I'm supposed to know that, because maybe she really did refuse to donate to that school. That's <laughs> God damn. Thank you so much for watching. And if you liked anything at all, please like, share, comment, subscribe. I will see you here next week.